Welcome everyone to this presentation called How to Become a Victor, Not a Victim. Thank you for giving up some of your precious time to view it. Hi everyone, it's so wonderful that you're here today to view this presentation. It will not be an interactive presentation because I'm going to be using this video for um, as a recording uh, to give certain people so I don't want everybody's names and boxes and everything like that to appear and when it comes to question and answers at the end we'll um, just put your questions in the chat box or in the email box and I will get them we'll talk about that at the end but I really want you to get something out of this and just because I'm upfront and honest and have integrity, I'm just going to tell you I'm going to be promoting a course at the end of it. So um, I hope you thoroughly enjoy this presentation and let's go. So a little bit about me. In 1976, which is a long time ago, I graduated with honours in microbiology and biochemistry and went on to become a bacteriologist in a, in a leading hospital here in Melbourne, Australia and um, worked there for several years, then took care of my children and my parents, and my in-laws, etc. and dabbled in a whole lot of health areas. Um, then I decided at 58 uh, to become a full-time student doing another bachelor degree, Bachelor of Health Science, and became a qualified naturopath at 62. How about that? Now, it should have stopped there, but I went on to be a full-time naturopath where I see complex cases, cases that have been where the person has been from specialist to specialist, and they say I'm their, their last resort. And... Um, I see a lot of anxiety and depression and mood disorders with all these conditions. So it's definitely a part of everything I do. And that is why I've incorporated courses into my treatment uh, for people to do so that they can change their negative belief systems and mindset and subconscious and deal with their neuroplasticity and rewire their brain so that treatment can be much easier and their outlook can be much better. So just want to finish this off by saying that whatever your age, and I've proved it, anything is possible, you just have to have a vision and purpose and then it's limitless. So I'm sorry, this is how I'm starting. I'm killing you off and you're at the pearly gates. When you look back at your life, are you going to say that are you going to feel that you were happy and that you live you lived your life in a happy way are you going to um say that you had a long-term and committed relationship that you took steps to improve your health that you realized your potential that you achieved your unique goals and that you had a career that you were proud of and did you feel that you had a purpose and you followed that path did you feel that you spent your life more as a victim or a victor and if you came to the conclusion that it was more as a victim then did you make the effort to change if not then why not? Do you think you would find yourself regretting what you did and wished you could have done better? Well, don't just um, spend the time regretting. If you're still alive and kicking, this is the time, this is the window of opportunity to change. Let's now look at the action steps for those that can't go forward and are stuck in their comfort zone. And we're going to call them the victims. And those that excel and go forward. And we're going to call them the victors. And this is the theme that goes right through this presentation. Let's see what, what they do that's different. So now here are the action steps for a, non, a victim. Because everyone is searching for happiness and excitement, no matter if we have a pattern of being a victim and a non-doer, we find something that we think resonates with us. We become so excited and can't wait to start. Just think, everyone, about those 
times that you are going to embark on something new and exciting. You'll be like this girl and jump for joy. However, like most endeavours in life, we might trip and fall. We experience pain and discomfort and feel that we will be judged. Most victims are very sensitive to that. Um, they will most probably label this as a failure. And with each failure, it just gets worse and worse. I had a client we'll, who will call Mary who came for her second appointment and before properly sitting down she said she failed. I was quite shocked by the statement and asked her what she meant. She said that after the first appointment she went shopping for food she might need with her change in diet and was well intentioned in starting her new eating plan, taking her supplements and adopting a healthier lifestyle. But in two weeks between the appointments she had done very little. I knew then, and she said, she said before she sat down, I'm a failure. I knew then that I needed more expertise to deal with clients such as Mary, and she was a strong motivator for me to become a practitioner in the course that I'm going to be offering you later. And um, Mary did this. She started off very excited to start her journey in recovery, but she couldn't. And what happened then is she went into avoidance and stopped coming. Now, this avoidance is called procrastination. And um, we all go through it at some stage. How many of us procrastinate? We know the task is important, but we will do anything and anything everything other than the job at hand and when the time is approaching the deadline for that job to be done or we have not done the health or work requirement to excel in that sphere we tend to find excuses and then to blame circumstances your upbringing your school days your bullying your so-called non-talents and on and on it goes yes this whole process becomes a cycle and when it does each, fam each failure will be worse, each uh, period of procrastination will be worse, and the exclu excuses and blaming will be worse. It just doesn't get better. Let's now look at some fundamental mistakes that victims might be doing. Firstly, they're not ready to give up the past negative messages, for example, from parents and siblings and kids at school and teachers, etc. People who told them they have no talents or are not intelligent or are ugly or will never achieve. And saying these things to a little kid really sticks, but you have to work on changing that. And um, number two, they have taken on the wrong goals because Perhaps they looked at others who have succeeded and thought their methods were the right ones for them, or they adopted other people's goals and not their own that aligns with their unique makeup and talents. For example, one of my friend's daughters finished her year 12 with very high scores. Her parents wanted her to be a doctor, but she wanted to be an architect. The pressure she was receiving was relentless. Clever kids should do medicine. Now, as you well know, medicine is not for everyone. Number three, they have limited focus. Of course they do. They're not really doing what that they were meant to do anyway. And they're easily distracted and they can be totally disorganized and have no action plan. That's not going to get you anywhere. Would you agree with that? Let's now look at the right action steps that victors do, the ones that make them successful. They have a vision, a passion, purpose, an achievable goal. And they find that that's really important to propel them away from the past to the future. I know this as a fact. If I did not have that vision to help my clients and others going forward, if I hadn't set a date and visualized me convening this online course with active participants, the months that I spent last year 
battling with software companies and having my my um website on and off and my business going down because people weren't ac able to access my website everything went wrong technologically in those six months and yet I still soldiered on because I had a vision and a purpose my family and friends were absolutely mystified that I was still plugging on and um, yeah, and I didn't cancel anything. I finished everything and here we are. I've done this a few times now and I've even run the trainings. So it just shows you that with that passion, you can go far. Even if you're going through a period, you're doing stuff that you don't necessarily like along the way, like marketing, right? I've always found it difficult, but I'm getting there and I'm mastering it slowly but surely because I have a vision and purpose. Um, Victor, victors have a vision that helps them propel them towards the future and they devise a plan that maps out the major action steps well in advance that will set their goal in motion and act accordingly. It's not just theory, they act it out and then they reach their goal. I want you now to meet Chloe. She's my buddy. She's my fictional character that comes to my presentations to explain, explain concepts. Now, in the past, Chloe was just a presentation. They were just presentation slides with Google images and some words. And yet people strongly related to her. She's a mixture of a lot of people that I've come across in my life. And there's even a little bit of me in there. So, um... Yes, now Chloe is going to explain these concepts. You're going to see in these two videos um, headings. These are the areas that are really, really important if you want to change. And they become the modules of the training course that I'm going to be offering at the end. So they're really important. Uh, you'll see in these two videos, they start off the same way, the first three I think the first three um, scenes are exactly alike. But then in the fourth scene, midway, things change for Chloe. In her, the, first the first video, she's the victim. In the second video, she's the victor. So um, now another reason why I'm putting this here is because I've made her into an animation. Never in my wildest dreams would I have thought I could have done this. It took me three weeks just before I turned 69. I wasn't trained in computers. Of course I wasn't. I'm not that age. And yet I put this together. I'm so proud of myself. And you know what? And um, they even give you a commercial license, this soft these software people. So I could have even made I could even make a career out of doing this for people, making animations for them. I don't think I will. I've got enough on my hands in my hands, but it just shows you it doesn't matter what age you can do things, it doesn't matter what age you can make a living out of something, and it doesn't matter what age you can make the impossible possible. So let's Let's learn about Chloe's life. Let's go. Hi, I'm Chloe, and this is my story. Following my family tradition, my parents wanted me to use my abilities in maths to become an accountant. Being an accountant was not what I wanted to do. I love designing clothes and my dream was to open my own shop to sell my designs. I knew I needed to talk to my parents and discuss my dreams of becoming a fashion designer with them. This is how the conversation went. Mum, Dad, I have given my future a lot of thought. I understand you want the best for me. However, I have a strong desire and passion to design clothes and my dream is to open up a shop where I can sell my designs. I really didn't expect this. I thought that you being an accountant was a done deal. I am not sure I am happy about this at all. You know it is a family tradition. Your brother is a successful accountant and you are good with numbers. In fact, you did really well in accounting 
in your final year of school. What is your take on all this, dear? Do you think I am right? I agree with you, James. Not only is accounting a great profession, but Chloe has no experience in business and, for that matter, designing and selling her designs for the public. It is one thing for her to make some absolutely lovely pieces for me, but selling designs commercially is really difficult. Chloe, push this notion out of your head and start focusing on your uni degree and your future profession as a successful accountant. Okay, mum and dad, I will have to think about it. I really would love to be a fashion designer and I'm not eager to become an accountant, but I know you want what's best for me. I would cry every night. I felt like a loser and I knew I could never make a mistake. I had to be perfect for my parents. I felt I was unworthy, not good enough. No one loved me. I was a failure. <laughs> Due to my negative belief system, I believed accounting was the right thing to do and I put my dreams aside to become an accountant. Honestly, I hated my job. The work along with the pressure was just too much. I wanted to give up. I felt it would be pointless to try if I would fail anyway. All I knew was I was not good as the other employees. It got to the point where I decided I would avoid challenges at all costs so I wouldn't look stupid. <laughs> my workmates didn't want a bar of me. I'd watch them each break, envying their relationships with each other, their light-hearted conversations and laughter. I felt so excluded. Only now do I question myself. Was it because I was always grumpy and complaining about the boss and company? Or was it because I was always depressed and a downer? Or maybe I was bitchy towards them. But I was feeling so miserable and I didn't know how to fake it. Chloe, I am disappointed in your attitude and your work. You have handed in your client's account work late every day this week. The work is sloppy to say the least and the clients are complaining about you. If you don't pull up your socks and soon, I will have no other choice but to let you go. Walking home from work after a long and horrible day, I felt alone picked on, yelled at, and excluded. I just didn't know how I could front up to work the next day for much of the same, or perhaps even worse, if that could even be possible. <laughs> at home, I would console myself with food. Not good healthy food, but comfort food. Mainly cheeseburgers, hot chips, pizza continuing to snack on junk throughout the night. I was putting on weight, looking awful, which just reflected my negative image of myself. I was constantly tired and not at all motivated to exercise. Basically, all I was motivated to do was eat and sleep, nothing else. Every day at my desk, I felt exhausted and defeated. My eyes were constantly wanting to shut but I didn't want to fall asleep like I'd occasionally done in the past. I'm still embarrassed. What made it even worse was the brain fog, which caused all the numbers to make zero sense. My memory had really deteriorated, and I wouldn't remember important things like emailing clients and so on. I had already received a warning from my boss, and I felt like such a failure. Chloe, you are two minutes late. This is just a prime example of your incompetence. I just can't forgive your behaviors and your so-called workmanship anymore. I am sorry to say that your association with this company has just come to an end, and you need to pack up your belongings today as you are fired, effective immediately. Can you relate to my life as a victim? It is not a happy way to live, I am sure you would agree. It is almost impossible to see positive changes in your life when you are gripped with these negative and limiting beliefs and thoughts. 
If you stay like this, you will continue to make the wrong decisions, meet and befriend the wrong people, sabotage relationships, be unsuccessful in your work endeavors, and most probably suffer from ill health. You need to change if you want your life to take on a positive trajectory. In the next video, you will see what would happen if I believed in myself. Hi, I'm Chloe, and this is my story. Following my family tradition, my parents wanted me to use my abilities in maths to become an accountant. Being an accountant was not what I wanted to do. I love designing clothes, and my dream was to open my own shop to sell my designs. I knew I needed to talk to my parents and discuss my dreams of becoming a fashion designer with them. This is how the conversation went. Mom, Dad, I have given my future a lot of thought. I understand you want the best for me. However, I have a strong desire and passion to design clothes and my dream is to open up a shop where I can sell my designs. I know I have zero knowledge in business, and for that matter, designing and making clothes that are good enough to be sold. So, if it is okay with you, I would love to take the next two years to do everything I can to obtain this knowledge and see if I have the ability to set my dream in motion. I will give you my word that if after two years I cannot seem to put the necessary steps into action, I will be still young enough to go to uni and study accounting with the intention to work in that field. What do you think? I really didn't expect this. I thought that you being an accountant was a done deal. I am not sure I am so happy about this. You know, it is a family tradition. Your brother is a successful accountant. Making good money, and you are good with numbers, and did well in accounting in your final year at school. Now, James, stop getting so excited and sit down. Just sit down. I'm not so sure I agree with you. Chloe is always sketching her designs since she was a little girl, and I've noticed that she is at her happiest when she's designing and making her garments. And the ones she has made for me, well, they are amazing. I get compliments all the time, even from people who have no idea that it was my daughter who designed and made these garments. Personally, although initially disappointed, I see now that the passion and excitement that you exude, Chloe, when you talk about these hopes and dreams, and the fact that you are giving yourself a finite time to explore the idea, which I personally think is very clever, I'm for it. What do you think, darling, now that I've said all this? Well, I see that I am outnumbered, okay? This is the deal. Two years and you put the time and effort to designing, making and selling clothes a reality. And if after that time, your mum and I believe that after assessing many factors, that if it will not work, then you keep to your word and enroll into uni and study accounting. If we can stick to this plan, I see the merits in it. Thank you. Mum and Dad, you're the best. This is everything. I won't let you down. I know you can do it, Chloe. Go for it and don't forget your supporting parents when you are rich and famous. I am in shock with what just happened. I did not expect my parents to support my idea about fashion designing. My parents were on board with me pursuing my purpose, my dream. I know I can do it. I believe I have the talent and I am capable. My parents recognize that this is what I want to pursue. They really love me and wanted the best for me. I feel so lucky to have them and I'm determined to make them very proud.
As soon as I could, I enrolled into fashion school. I didn't think it would be so hard. I failed a couple of tests. But the weird thing was, is I was not at all angry. There were no breakdowns, I didn't cry. And despite everything, I was so proud of myself. I went to the teacher and asked her for feedback on what I had done wrong. And then I implemented these strategies in future tests and did really well. I learned that mistakes and negative events can be very beneficial. And I made a point not to be hard on myself because I failed, but instead learned from the mistakes and tried to do better the next time. In the evening, after a long day at fashion school, I would sit in front of my computer and attend an online business course. If you think that fashion school is difficult, business school and the assignments took this to a whole new level. I floundered, sometimes failed, and often lost my work to cyber heaven. However, despite these setbacks, I soldiered on as I had a goal and only two years to show my parents I could do this. So, after every setback, I picked myself off the ground, dusted myself down, and got on with the job. With every failure came a success. If I lost my work to cyber heaven, the second time I did it, it was better, and when I finally handed in the set assignment, I felt that, in itself, was an achievement. I was not going to let these setbacks define me. I was going to show my parents and the world that I could do this. Fashion school changed me. This new journey was so uplifting and it was obvious to everyone around me. I was fun to be around, always surrounded by the wonderful friends I had made in fashion school. I was constantly light-hearted with them, and so they enjoyed my company. Going home each day after fashion school, I almost felt like dancing. Every day was filled with excitement and new challenges. I was the most content that I'd ever been. More and more, I felt that designing clothes and selling them was my purpose. At home after a long day, I was very mindful of my diet and lifestyle. I knew that if I ate well, that is unprocessed whole food packed with nutrients, exercised regularly and slept well, retiring at an appropriate time, I would have the brain health, nerve connectivity, otherwise known as neuroplasticity, energy and a strong immune system to get me over the line. One day towards the end of my course, I got the validation that I was looking for to prove to myself that I had made the right decision choosing designing over accounting. At fashion school, we'd been asked to submit one of our designs into a statewide student designer competition. I absolutely couldn't believe it. I was utterly shocked and speechless when the teacher read out my name as the winner in the bridal wear category. I can honestly say it was one of the best moments of my life receiving that trophy. I have to say it was what I needed to show my parents that this path was right for me and I had the talents to try to make a success of this. Well, I did it. I finally finished my two courses with honours and I was able to open up my shop just like I dreamt I would. It took a few years of mistakes and struggling to get me to a place that my designs were being recognised and I was actually making a profit. I won't lie, it wasn't easy. The trophy I won helped but it was still all very challenging. But despite this, each morning I would wake up and know I made the right decision, excited to get going and see what the day would bring. I want this for you. Feeling a victim doesn't help you or anyone else. You need to change the way you think. And then the choices become limitless. So I hope you enjoyed those two videos. 
um, it was a bit of entertainment for you and I hope you related to it. Um, when I showed Chloe in the beginning, my first presentation, a woman afterwards said, that's me. She was somebody who just absolutely loved art, but for 30 years has been an accountant and has not enjoyed what she's been doing. And never in those 30 years did she touch her paintbrushes. After this session, she went home, took out her paintbrushes. She's been sending me pictures ever since. and They are amazing. It wasn't just she thought she had a talent. She really does have a talent. And she let that just sleep for 30 years. What a shame. So I hope this resonates with you. So I asked the question, we know what we should do, so why don't we do it? Why didn't Chloe midway become the victor? You know, why did she stay the victim? The cartoon says, the man at the podium says, who wants change? And everybody puts their hands up. But in the bottom little cartoon, he says, who wants to change? And nobody puts their hands up. People want to change. They can change. But most don't. We all want to make positive changes. The question is how. So to explain the concept of why we don't change, uh, even though we, we want to, and even though we perhaps even know how to, and we still don't. Uh, let's talk about health. I'm a naturopath. I could have talked about a whole lot of different areas. I could have been, could talked about sports, about education, about work, and, and being successful at work, um, and relationships. But I've decided to take health because again I'm a naturopath so what does it take to be healthy and stay healthy I bet you know I bet you within seconds you already know what you need to do to stay healthy yes you know that you have to do physical activity and you have to eat good food and you have to drink and you have to relax and you have to think positively and you have to have fun and you have to have good sleep and etc etc you know that already right you know that already I don't have to tell you. And yet, even after knowing all this, most of us still do all the things that we shouldn't do. This guy knows that everything he's got there isn't healthy, but he's not about to change. And he'll then, funny enough, be really surprised when he gets sick in a few years, right? Crazy, because he knew it. He knew it then. Indeed. Even though we have the latest technology and the latest medical research and pharmaceuticals, metabolic disease and chronic inflammatory diseases are on the increase. Most of these graphs that I'm showing here are trending sharply upwards, and except for the graph on the bottom right. But that's showing, that's um, a graph that's indicating health. In 1950, we were 10 times healthier than we were in 2021. And at the turn of the 20th century, most doctors had never seen a heart attack. Crazy, right? When you consider how bad it is today. And let's look at how it is today. And we'll look at statistics in Australia with cardiovascular disease. One in four deaths and it kills 118 people every day or one person every 12 minutes. I mean, you know, we, we know what to do about it. And yet we don't. Look how sick we're becoming. And why do we stop doing other things that we thought were initially going to be good for us? I mean, look at this couple. They loved each other at one stage, right? But now they're breaking up. Maybe that relationship was the perfect one to everyone. Even they thought it was perfect in the beginning. But no, it doesn't continue. Maybe you thought that you're sedentary, you're sitting all the time, you need to go to the gym, it's the right thing. And you pay for a year membership, but you only go the first few weeks and then let it lapse. What a shame, 
right? Or maybe you know you've got to go on some sort of diet plan or eat healthy eating plan, but after a few weeks you cannot resist and you go back and you put on more weight than you started. So why don't we change? The answer is simple, because change is difficult and we often can't do it ourselves. We try. We try to use willpower, right? We really try, but it just doesn't work. And the reason it doesn't work is when you're um, putting b beliefs against willpower, beliefs will always win. Those negative beliefs that you were fed as a child that you haven't released, that are still in your head day in, day out, will, will be so powerful and that willpower will just fizzle. It's as simple as that. So, so maybe you're asking yourself or you keep on asking yourself, why do I exist and what's my role in the universe? Why am I stuck and have nowhere to go? Or why do I feel trapped in a boring dead-end job or I'm unemployed or a stay-at-home mum with no one to care for anymore? What do I do now that I'm separated, divorced? Or how can I go forward when I'm sick with reduced quality of life? Or do you... Ask the following hard-hitting questions. Why am I here? What am I doing? How did I get here? How do I change my situation? Perhaps I don't want to be a victim anymore. How do I change that? Well, if you can relate, I have some great news. Prepare yourself to improve and deepen your resolve and focus on your self-discovery journey with exceptional resources to help you find your way. For those so-called victims, and even for those victors, I'm offering you the Brain Optimizer Training Program. This is an amazing course which incorporates the NeuroChange Method, and I want to share with you that uh, this course, because I know it can help you and propel yourself forward in your life and optimize your brain for achieving fulfillment fulfillment, whatever your age. I know there's a lot of self-help programs out there. I get it. Truly, I do. And, you know, why should you trust this one? But this one's being devised not by just one individual just felt better doing certain things to go forward in, in his, his or her life or just one doctor or one scientist. This, this program, as we will see, is put together by a, a team of science uh, scientists from Yale and Harvard who have collaborated together and who have had 40 years of research and clinical experience and writing best-selling books, each behind them. So please stay to the end because if you're even slightly interested, you may be amazed at the bonuses I'm offering. But I absolutely understand if you don't want to do this. I want only committed people in my groups as they will support and motivate each other. So let's go and see what this course is all about. The program involves cutting-edge neuroscience research that goes beyond what we can be what can be learned from traditional books and podcasts. You know, it's accumulation of all the stuff that these scientists have experienced and researched and seen all these years. It's devised by, as I said, world experts in neuroscience, social psychology, philosophy, etc. And they're bringing neuroscience out of the labs and into mainstream personal development training. We are so lucky to have this. And it, con it consists of four phases um, that the deal with consciousness, neuroplasticity, the subconscious and the brain to reliably, reliably transform your life with evidence based methodologies that lead to excellence and they do I've seen it time and time again so this is the structure of the course very similar to how Chloe's two videos went because if we're going to do this properly we have to look at the purpose choosing and going through that journey of finding your purpose and then we go on to changing limiting beliefs 
to positive beliefs via belief revision. We then change your fixed mindset to growth mindsets. Very important if you want to go forward. And emotional intelligence. If we, we don't have emotional intelligence, everything crumbles around us. Um, and subconscious influence and motivation. That's what we need to know. And we, we spend quite a bit of time on neuroplasticity. That's the brain connecting and learning new things and cognition and, and just the overall health of the brain. This is all paramount for us to change things that have been implanted in our psyche for forever. So here you'll learn about the pricing and the bonuses for the Brain Optimizer training program. Let's go through it. Now, 12 lessons, six modules, which is what most people do when they're running the NeuroChange um, method, um, is a payment of $9.95. Now, I know for some this might be seem expensive, but let me tell you, it normally retails for $4,000. $495 and I know this is a fact and um, maybe unlike some se sessions out there this one includes the of course it includes the live sessions but it also includes the recordings so you'll be able to play this over and over again at your leisure. So what's included in this retail price um, this screenshot, I took it from the internet, the NeuroChange client resources, which is for, you get it for three months, which is the time that you're going to be doing this. You're going to be given comprehensive notes that are not downloadable and workbooks that are. This normally retails and you see it there, $9.95. Well, it's not costing you an extra $9.95. I am throwing this in. So it, it's almost like you're getting things now at, at half price. Now, when most people are doing the NeuroChange method, they get a document called the Purpose and Flow document as their first part of the course. There's no live session for this. The very first module starts off with beliefs. However, I have Put this document to two one-hour presentations. It'll cover two weeks, so it'll add another two weeks to the 12 weeks, making 14 weeks in total, and that is three months in total, and that's usually the time it takes to start changing habits. This module is valued at $299, $299 and it comes again with the recording, and it, it Nobody offers this. I'm offering now a 14-week program for $9.95. And to go with all of that, you are eligible for these free downloadable ebooks valued at $39.95. The first two, part one and part two, are having a winning attitude, and the second two dealing with food addictions, part one and part two. You can see this on my website. I am selling it for $39.95 of an ebook, and that's a total saving of $159.80. Now, if you sign up in the next week, you'll get a further webinar for free. You'll get the um, masterclass called How to Be Assertive Masterclass, and that's again valued at $299. It um, comes in two parts. At the moment, I've been um, conducting them live, but I'm thinking of recording them. So if you do get this, um, this masterclass, you'll be able to watch it when you feel like it. And I'm going to add a further two ebooks called The Assertiveness Techniques, part one and part two, which cover a lot of what the... Um, the presentations cover and they're of course like the other books 39.95 each and that's another saving of 79.90 for every participant i am going to offer you um, a place in my hub and um, for the neurohealth method 
This is a community-driven um, global initiative that offers mental well-being support for everyone, everywhere, for free. Right, so our, our mission is to help at least 1 million people globally through our network of hubs positioned in every suburb, town, city and country. We are not government or privately funded. Now, at the moment, it just got launched in November. They only selected 10 practitioners per country. And although this is available to everyone, I am firstly offering it to my students and my patients because I don't want to have... You know, if I'm only one of 10, I don't want to have a million people in my group because that's going to be a bit too overwhelming for me. So I'm offering it to you. This training is different to the um, Brain Optimizer training program. The brain, I would say that the Brain Optimizer training program should be the basis of this. Um, but if you can't afford it, at least you can do the hub, you join the hub and get training every week. In summary, for, for just attending tonight, you save $1,573. For taking on the early bird special, you get a further $378.90, which gives you a total saving of nearly $2,000. So you're getting a course that's and I haven't even included the difference between the $9.95 and the $4,495. If we add that, it's staggering how much you are getting by um, doing this course, plus all the good knowledge, of course. If you are interested, you'll be given an enrollment form, which you'll fill out, and a payment um, you will need to pay. Now, I'm just going to state here that if you're eligible for NDIS, you might be able to claim this course on NDIS, which would make it free for you, um, or we could work out instalments. I don't want to um, restrict anybody. I still need, need to get paid for my effort, um, but I will work something out with you. Mostly it'll be instalments, so we can work out something together. Just remember, if you are a procrastinator, or if you take a long time to make a decision, or if you need to do this course but are scared, just remember anxiety might change your mind. So if this is so, commit and enroll in the entire course now and don't wait. Now we're making your decision. I just want to add that this has wide ranging benefits for general well-being in life, in sports, in business, in relationships, in money in study, emotional health and addiction. So if you have any of these areas, you will still, and you will benefit greatly from this course. Doing this course will put a multifunction set of tools based on sound and reliable research in your hands that will provide you with a change process and help you negotiate life better than you could have ever imagined. You can change. You can make that change a permanent and powerful ally in pursuing your goals and ideal life. You owe it to yourself to stay focused and applying yourself to the processes taught in the Brain Optimized Training Program. And in doing so, you'll be on your way to achieving beyond your wildest dreams. Along the way, I'm going to check in on you and make sure that you're still committed and doing the work to go to go forward. I don't want you to waste a single penny or cent. Be invigorated and inspired and empowered. Let's do this. See your life move in a positive direction and succeed. You have this window of opportunity. Take the bull by the horns and do it now. Don't doubt yourself. Do it now. So thanks a lot for attending. 
And these are some of the contact details. The website's naturopathsolutions.com.au. My Facebook page is slash celia.grossman.9. My group, please join my group. I'd love you to. It's called Naturally Optimizing Your Mental Health. And that's slash group slash naturally happy. And that's what I want. And also, if you um, if you want to, if you want to join my hub, um, here's the link to my hub. So, yes, let's go to the next slide. So I won't be answering any question and answers right now. I would like you to submit them via the chat box or the email box. And I will look over all of them, all the general questions I'll put, toge I'll put together in one email and send it to all of you. If you have a specific, specific questions, you can go to my website and at the bottom you'll see that you, are, you, know, that you can book a 20 minute free consultation. Book that and we can discuss some of your concerns. So I hope to see you on the other side. I hope you do this course because I get such a buzz out of seeing how people change for the positive and I want you to change to the positive. Take care.